So I want to talk today just a little bit about the day of the Lord. And I, I hope you'll hang in there with me because uh, I know that most people, they just want to talk about the rapture. When are we going to be raptured? But I think it's super important that when we develop an eschatology, that we um, stick to what the Bible says, that we have a biblical filter that we run this stuff through. And it's really hard to see what the scriptures are really saying uh, if we've already been sort of handed an end time scenario. And then everything that we read in the Bible sort of runs through the grid of whatever that scenario is. And so then things like the day of the Lord uh, uh, become defined by whatever our eschatology is. And it's only in the process of like actually studying the scriptures and, you know, basically trying to get rid of a um, predetermined filter, what, whether it's pre-trib, pre-wrath, uh, mid-trib, post-trib, whatever, um, or preterist, whatever your leaning is, get rid of the grid, okay, and then just go with what the Bible says. And it's surprising how difficult that is and how, how we will resist that. I know that for me, the grid that I was handed was a pre-tribulation rapture grid. And so when I'm reading scripture and I'm thinking about end times, um, there's still bits and pieces of that pre-tribulation rapture grid that I kind of still see the end times through. So it's only with great difficulty that we lay aside old thinking and actually look at what the scriptures really say. So the day of the Lord is an extremely important concept in the Bible. It was present in the Old Testament. It's um, the idea of the day of the Lord. Paul talks about it, that the day of the Lord won't come until the man of sin is revealed. He talks about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The day of the Lord is equated with the coming of Christ, okay? And the coming of Christ is his parousia, his visible appearing to rule and reign. It has nothing to do with the rapture, although people will, you know, take uh, the coming of Christ and sort of run it through their pre-trib grid and say that um, the coming of Christ is the same thing as the rapture. Not true. You need to run it through a scriptural grid. The coming of the Lord, his parousia, his visible appearance, is when he begins to rule and reign. So there's end time theology that talks about how we're in right now the age of grace. Okay, you have to realize the Bible never uses the age of grace as a definition for anything. Okay, that is a man-made tradition that people hold on to, you know, that the church age is the age of grace and so on and so forth. In the Bible, an age is a period of time. Okay, it's a, it's a period of time where something is happening. And I know that there are people who, who will go back to, you know, in dispensationalism, there's various ages according to covenants and so on. Throw all that away. That's a filter. How do you know that that's scriptural? You don't know that, okay? You're just believing that's true. Most people haven't researched any of this on their own. So just take that filter with the church age and all of that and put it aside because the Bible does not recognize that as a thing. The age of grace has existed since Adam, okay? Adam experienced the grace of God. Eve experienced the grace of God. Abraham experienced the grace of God. All of these people, especially if you read through Hebrews 11, that chapter of faith, they experience the grace of God because of their faith, okay? And that's the same way we as believers experience the grace of God right now. It's through faith. So if you want to call this age the age of anything, it's the age of grace through faith, and it's been here since time began. All right, so there is coming another age, okay? This new age that's coming is the millennial age. Okay, and that's actually scriptural. When Jesus and the disciples were on the Mount of Olives and the disciples wanted to know about Jesus coming, his parousia, his visible return, um, his visible coming as the King of Kings, uh, they wanted to know when, when he was going to come and what would be the end of the age. 
So the apostles knew that when this present world ended, there would be a an age where David's son would sit on his throne, on the throne in Israel. The disciples knew that. There was coming a time when this present age would end and the millennial reign would begin. And the question the disciples were asking is, basically, when will the millennium start? Okay, when will this new age be here? They weren't asking anything about the rapture. They weren't asking about the second coming because they didn't know that Jesus was leaving. Okay, they had no idea about that at the point in time when they're having this discussion with Jesus. They didn't even realize that he was going to be crucified yet. This was still a, you know, a, not a thing for them. Uh, Jesus had been telling them about that. Uh, he would have to die, but they still weren't getting it in their head. In fact, just a few days before the Olivet Discourse, when um, Matthew 24, um, those events are recorded, Jesus had just rode into Jerusalem, uh, you know, on a donkey, and people were proclaiming him the king. And so the disciples are going, so when is this going to happen? When is the end of this age and the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ? That's the question they were asking. It's one question. When is your coming as king? When are you going to do that? Uh, and when is the millennial reign going to begin? And is there a sign that's associated with that? So those are the questions that Jesus was answering in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. He wasn't answering questions about the rapture. He wasn't answering questions about the end of the age of grace. He wasn't talking about any of that. Okay, he was talking about uh, events that would precede the millennium. Okay, so in the Bible, the day of the Lord is a thing. Okay, that is a thing. A seven-year tribulation is not a thing. Okay, that is never referred to at all in the Bible ever, a seven-year tribulation, especially a seven-year tribulation which equals the wrath of God or the judgments of God. That is not a thing in the Bible either. That is a, a man-made tradition that people have arrived at through, you know, extrapolation, okay? It is not a thing, though. The day of the Lord is a thing, all right? It is something that's talked about over and over again in the, in the scriptures, both Old and New Testaments. So, Let's look at um, a passage in the Old Testament in the book of Amos. This is how the prophet Amos talked about the day of the Lord. Okay, and remember the day of the Lord, according to um, Jewish thinking, was the millennial reign of Christ. Okay, they didn't know it was going to be a thousand years. In fact, they sort of confused new heavens and new earth and all of that with the millennium. But the day of the Lord was going to be when David's son, Jesus, would rule over the whole earth. Okay, and so the Jews were looking forward to that time when they would be the head and not the tail. So this is what it says in Amos chapter 5, beginning with verse 18. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Okay, that's kind of odd. Why wouldn't somebody want to see the day of the Lord? Why would you have the day of the Lord? It's darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned with his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Okay, it's like when you see danger and you're running away from it and you're running into bigger danger. Verse 20, is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? Okay, so Amos is saying that the day of the Lord is not what you think it is. If you want the day of the Lord to come, you're going to have to expect that there's going to be something uh, that's not good about it. And you go, well, that's weird. Why, would, why wouldn't we want uh, the day of the Lord to come? Because the day of the Lord is when Christ is going to rule, right? Well, Amos is saying, uh, you know what, you, want, you say you want the day of the Lord? Well, let me tell you, it's not going to be exactly what you think. And then Joel talks about the day of the Lord too. In Joel chapter 2, verse 30, and I will give portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. And the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. 
And it shall come to pass that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Joel is confirming this, that there's going to be uh, the sun turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. We're given one more little specific clue here about the sun turning to darkness and and the moon to blood. Okay, and if you'll recall, that is what happens at the sixth seal, and Jesus talked about it also in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 29. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and there will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the tribes will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, so that is referring to when Christ is coming, okay, and the age when the millennium is here. Okay, so when the disciples are asking, when is your coming and when will, you know, your appearance, your parousia as the king of kings and lord of lords, king over the whole earth, Jesus is telling them, look, it's going to be coming, but it's going to get really bad before I come. Things are going to be really, really bad, which is what Amos said, and it's also what Joel said, that it's a terrible day, the great and terrible day, that when the beginning of the millennium happens, that age to come, that it's going to start out really bad. Okay, so according to the scriptures, the day of the Lord is going to start with wrath and darkness and terror. Okay, and all the events that we saw in the sixth seal, okay, which will take place just before the day of the Lord. So Peter has uh, has something to say about the day of the Lord too. In fact, he actually tells us how long the day of the Lord will last. This is in P 2 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 8. And the context here is the coming of the Lord. That's what chapter 3 is about. And he's talking about how there'll be scoffers and where's the promise of his coming and so on and so forth. Then he gets to verse 8. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Okay, this is a, a clue that he's going to be talking about the millennium. Okay, the thousand year reign of Christ, that day, that thousand year day that will be at the end of 6,000 years. For the Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slow, slowness, but is forbearing toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Okay, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. How does the day of the Lord come? It comes like a thief. That's what Peter tells us. And Peter is the one who sort of gives us the clue that, that the day of the Lord is a thousand years. So, so far, this is what we've found, is that the day of the Lord is going to be signaled by the events of the sixth seal. Okay, that the day of the Lord is going to come with wrath. It's going to come with darkness and terror. We know that it'll last a thousand years. It'll come like a thief. In other words, when the day of the Lord actually begins, everybody's going to know it. There isn't going to be anybody who doesn't know that the day of the Lord has started. It comes with with wrath, the sun going dark, the moon turning to blood. Uh, the day of the Lord is when Christ is going to reign, okay? That was the question the disciples were asking. When is the end of this age and the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ? Jesus, when are you coming to rule as king? Okay, Jesus said a lot of stuff is going to happen first. Uh, Paul tells us that the abomination of desolation has to happen. The man of sin has to come into the temple. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
The day of the Lord won't come until that happens first. Okay, and that's what Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, that when people see the abomination of desolation, they're to flee. Okay, so we know that the day of the Lord, the wrath of God, the coming age, which is the millennium, won't start until after the abomination of desolation. So the sixth seal is all these signs, and then the seventh seal is silence in heaven. Silence comes before judgment. That there is this reverential silence before judgment begins, okay, before the wrath of God is poured out. And basically what God is doing is he is getting rid of the old system so that when his son begins to reign, it'll be like a kind of a fresh start. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. So this is also what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But as to the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When is the thief in the night? It's right here, which the sixth and seventh seal, which then will usher in the, the uh, seven bowls of wrath. When people who are living at this time say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them. And then Paul says this, but you're not in darkness that that day would surprise you. In other words, there's going to be people, believers, who are alive during this time, which is why people have a pre-wrath position. Okay, what most people who hold to pre-wrath or pre-trib or post-trib or mid-trib, what they don't understand is that there are multiple raptures that happen before this one. This is the one Paul's talking about here in 1 Thessalonians, the one that happens at the day of the Lord. And he says, the people, Christians who are alive here should not be surprised when this one happens. Um, they need to wait for it and always be awake and watching for it. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not sons of the darkness. So let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. So I am not sure that Paul understood that there was going to be three different raptures. Okay, at least maybe not at the time he was writing Thessalonians. Because he was including himself in a group of people that of believers that would have to be alive up until this point in time. And actually, earlier on in the passage where he talks about those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, um, alive and survive, what that word means, survive, um, until the coming of the Lord, okay? That's basically here. That's when the uh, signs are of his coming. Okay, and the day of the Lord will signal the end of this age. It doesn't signal the end of the age of grace because the Bible does not recognize that as a thing. Okay, it signals the end of Satan's rule through his son, his false son, the Antichrist, on the earth. Satan won't be here. Um, uh, it'll be, people will be here who still have a sin nature, and so Christ will rule over them, will be his helpers, his elders, kings and priests, who will also rule uh, over them during the millennium. People will have a sin nature. We won't have a sin nature if we're a believer. That's not going to be a problem for us. But the people on earth will have a sin nature during the millennium. But Satan won't be here. So that's a new age when Christ will rule. Okay, and that's called the day of the Lord. So then what Peter does is he's going to skip over the whole millennium and go straight to what is called the day of God, the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, so Christ will reign. And then we start the day of God. Okay, which is an eternal day. So let's read what Peter says. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then...
the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the elements will be dissolved with fire and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burned up. That We know that the heavens are going to pass away. Okay, They're going to be dissolved with fire and the works will be burned up. And then Peter says this, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of persons ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening or earnestly desiring the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be kindled and dissolved and elements will melt with fire. But according to his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So Peter just skips over that whole millennium. Okay, he goes from when the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night and goes straight to when uh, everything is dissolved by fire and there's a new heavens and a new earth and we've now entered into the day of God. So the day of the Lord is synonymous with the millennium and it'll last a thousand years. All right, so the day of the Lord actually starts right back here with the sixth, sixth and seventh seal, okay, and the bowls, okay, and it will last a thousand years. What's the big deal here? Well, because I'm always running scriptures through a failed grid of pre-tribulation rapture, I did what most people do. Okay, what I was taught to do is that the second coming of Christ will start the millennium. Okay, so the millennium starts here and goes until, until the great white throne judgment. Okay, so that's where I would put it. But scripturally speaking, the day of the Lord actually begins right here wherever that is, at the sixth seal, uh, it's on a day we don't know, that comes in like a thief, and it lasts for we don't know how long, okay? And the bulls of wrath are going to be poured out at that time. But the day of the Lord encompasses all the bad stuff right here, and, and then the, the glory of the millennial reign. Okay, so the millennium comes in uh, like a thief. It starts out with wrath and darkness. It's darkness and not light. This is what I think is a clearer biblical understanding of when the millennium actually begins. It starts right here. The earth passes away and the heavens pass away and people are resurrected and they're standing before the great white throne judgment. Okay. All right. So if we were to put the day of the Lord and all the events that surround the day of the Lord, which remember is the millennial reign of Christ, the whole thing, including coming in like a thief with darkness and not light and the six seal, sun going dark, moon turning to blood and so on and so forth. And, and then... Peter tells us that somewhere along the line, the day of God will begin and there's going to be, um, you know, the heavens and the earth passing away and so on. Revelation actually gives us a little more detail about um, the things that are going to happen just before the day of God, which is that eternal day. So let's put this on a timeline, okay? Paul tells us that the day of the Lord won't come until the abomination of desolation takes place, till the man of sin takes his seat in the temple of God. That's what Jesus also said. Um, he told his apostles, there's going to be stuff that happens before I begin to reign. There's going to be some bad stuff that's going to happen, but then the really bad thing will happen with the abomination of desolation, and then there's going to be a time of trouble like nobody, like nobody's seen before. So it, it, has, it will happen after the abomination of desolation. In Matthew, we have the events of the sixth seal happening after the abomination of desolation. The sun going dark, the moon turning to blood. In Joel, it also talks about the sun going dark and the moon turning to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Amos told us that it was darkness and not light. Okay, and why would people want to desire the day of the Lord? Because it's going to come in really bad and the events 
that are associated with the sixth seal are certainly that. We know that the sixth seal is going to be followed by the seventh seal, which is silence in heaven. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. Both Peter and Paul tell us that it will come in like a thief in the night. And we are aware that there are going to be believers present um, at this time. We know that they'll be raptured right here. Okay, the wrath of God is going to happen. After that, seven bowls of wrath. And then there's going to be the second coming of Christ at Armageddon. That's going to happen right there. And then Peter jumps us all the way um, to when, when everything is burned with fire. And we have the day of God, which is the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, we also know that Revelation tells us that after the thousand years, Satan is going to be released for a little while. Okay, after the thousand years. Okay, so the millennium is going to start right here with the events associated with the sixth and seventh seals and the seven bowls, and it's going to last for a thousand years. And then there's going to be another little time after the millennium that Satan is released. And then there's uh, the Gog and Magog battle. Okay, and that's the second one. Okay, the second Gog Magog battle. And um, then God is going to put that down. And then everything, the earth and uh, the heavens will be dissolved with fire. And that's when we have the great white throne judgment. After that, we begin the day of God. Okay, so the millennium, this thousand year reign, is the day of the Lord. Um, and it's after the tribulation of those days, by the way, which is right here. That's when Christ will come. But here's the other thing I want you to realize is that does not, the tribulation of those days is shortened, okay? We don't know how long it'll be, but it'll be uh, less than three, three and a half years because the beast is going to have the full 42 months to reign. And the remnant of Israel be in the wilderness for 1,260 days. So the tribulation of those days, and remember this is, you know, from the abomination uh, until the return of Christ is um, what we would call the great tribulation, but it's shortened because the day of the Lord or the millennium is going to interrupt it. And God is going to shorten it. How short? We don't know. We don't know how long into the 42-month reign of the beast that, um, you know, we'll have to go before the wrath of God begins, before the day of the Lord, before the millennial age begins. So what this means here is that the day of the Lord is not associated with the rapture, and the day of the Lord actually is the same thing as the millennium, they're synonymous. The day of the Lord will begin with signs of the sun going dark and the moon turning to blood, but that does not is not a sign of the rapture or when we're going to go. It's a sign for these people here, or Satan, the people who are here on the earth. The people who are watching and waiting for Christ, they're not going to be surprised. Okay, They're going to be awake. They're going to be expecting that the wrath of God will begin before the 42-month reign of the beast ends. So sometime after the abomination or before 
um, the, the visible return of Christ at Armageddon, the wrath of God, the day of the Lord, the thousand year reign of Christ will begin. And believers who are present during that time will be taken into heaven before that starts. It's on a day we don't know when it is. Okay, that third rapture, we do not know. We do not know the day or the hour that the day of the Lord will begin. We don't know when this age ends and the new age begins. So the last 6,000 years have been an age. And there is another age to come. And when the day of the Lord is over, then we're going to have the day of God, which is eternal. It's the eternal age. So the passages that people often use for rapture passages, especially in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, uh, Matthew 24, they're not rapture passages at all. They're day of the Lord or messianic age, thousand year reign of Christ, the millennium. That's what they're talking about. Everybody is looking forward. The, even though like we're looking forward to the rapture, most people were looking forward to this right here when Christ was going to rule and reign, when Satan would be bound. Okay, that's what people are looking for. And Peter was even jumping past the day of the Lord, going straight to the day of God, when everything is going to be just beautiful, awesome, and perfect. Okay, so I realize that this is kind of a technical Bible study, but I'll tell you, you need to know the scriptures in order to get your eschatology right. Otherwise, you're going to be persuaded um, to believe things that aren't true, uh, that can't be scripturally um, supported. So uh, leave a comment in the comment section. We'll see you on another video. Till then, have a blessed day.